Hi, Paul. Um, hi, everyone. Um, it's great to be here and to share at least my, my story over the last eight years. Um, so as you said, um, I had a corporate life. Um, I had the you know, I had the pleasure and, and you know, I was um, of, of being able to kind of work around the world with my corporation. Uh, in 2020, I, you know, um, I, I left that corporation to uh, return to Bali. So I had previously worked in Jakarta for about three years um, before leaving Indonesia. Um, uh, and I had really positive experiences about working and living in the country. Um, and probably that was the highlight of you know working in various countries in Africa, in in the Caspian, in Southeast Asia, and I'm from Scotland. Uh, you'll hear a Glaswegian accent. Um, so um, yeah, so when it was time for me to leave my kind of corporate life, um, I with my wife we decided that we wanted to. I guess restart the experience uh, in 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 Indonesia. And at so the why time, Indonesia? Because you've been, it's very interesting. You say you've been in Africa, you've been in Southeast Asia, and this is the place where you decided to uh, to change. Yeah, a lot uh, of people are doing in Bali, so apparently there's a, spe a special place for that. There's right? an attra there's an attraction. <laughs> I think um, it there's aspects around. Well, we were certainly here for three years. And we got used to the you know the processes, the culture, the language, um, and it was easy for us to you know live in Indonesia, live in Jakarta, or live in Bali. We knew that that the what the conditions were gonna what were going to be be like. So very positive, I think, from an aspect of there's nothing here that um, you know I can't get you know in terms of you know foods and you know these types of things. You know there's not you know. It, Indonesia is an is an an abundant country, yeah. uh, and you know to a certain extent it's easy to live here, yeah. um, if you work within you know the rules and regulations of yeah, the country. Yeah, for sure, yeah, it's know. very important yeah, uh, when you allocate somewhere to always be in line with the regulation because sometimes like we can see on social media there is a few uh, uh, posts sometimes that show that. Uh, some people are not, uh, yeah. um, I would say, uh, in compliance with the regulation. But most of the people who are living here, I mean, you said, uh, what, eight, uh, six, four years in Bali? Something? Yeah, four yeah. years in Bali. Yeah. 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 And uh, yeah. so a lot of people who are here are living here uh, properly. And, uh, yeah, yeah it, I mean, it, compliance. Yeah, compliance yeah. is the... Most of the people, we cannot see, I mean, we see all the time on social media, uh, always on Instagram, some... Uh, um, I would say post or that are making the buzz, you know. But at the end, most of people who are here are, are, li are, living, are living in peace within, and are living with the, uh, with the yeah, community correct, and things. So yeah. it's very important yeah. to say that. What What I like in your story is that you've been in both sides because you've been so first in the corporate, but you've been in, in Jakarta also. Mm -hmm. Okay, so most of sometimes people think, yeah, Indonesia is uh, or Bali is uh, is a country itself, you know. But you have also Jakarta and Jakarta. If, is a very interesting place also for business and for uh, or business opportunity yep. uh, right. as as Bali. Yeah. So uh, how has, has been this switch? Between, you know, because the switch. Yeah, it's been. Uh, I mean, I I, I love Jakarta. I loved working there. I love the city. It's a city that does actually open up more and more that you, that you live there. Yeah. Um, so if I had my preference, um, I would probably still live and work in Jakarta yeah. uh, because of that diversity and the vibe that you get in yeah. the city. I think it's fantastic. Um, um, but, you know, because of the pandemic and those aspects, then, you know, we chose to we, cho we chose to move to Bali. And obviously, we'd kind of been in Bali a few times, so I'd experienced that. I knew what, it, what I was kind of getting myself into. Um, one thing that I did um, appreciate was is that Indonesia is a very administratively heavy country. Um, so there's a lot of kind of processes, a lot of laws and regulations. Yeah. Uh, and so when I was in um, Jakarta working for that corporation, um, there, you know, I, I was aware of those processes. So before coming here, I knew I needed to help with, with those things. If I was going to set myself up or me and my family were going to set ourselves up with, 
you know, a place to stay for the long term yeah. uh, with property uh, and to kind of start up my own yeah. company and my, my own business. Yeah, and um, uh, to, to comply with the own visas also as well and for yeah, the family right. because we have a lot of clients also that uh, are coming to us and say, hey, I want to relocate to Bali, I want to make a break or I want to work now from Bali, work from home or, or whatever. And, and sometimes it's a bit like you said, with all the regulation, how to comply with that and uh, how to be in line. Yeah. And like you said, the first thing is, yeah, can I work here? Uh, do I need to make a company? Um, how do I find a place to live? Especially when you have a family, uh, you don't want to arrive and, uh, and be in a hotel and don't know where to go. You have the school, you have all these things for most of people. But you, you ended in, uh, in Jakarta already with, um, with a corporation. So it was somebody already um, handling yeah, the formalities, handling, if yeah. you like, of um, you know, all of those aspects. But then when I left the corporation, I was you know, essentially on my own. Yeah. Um, and I was either going to spend all day, every day, working through admin administrative kind of forms to yeah. get these things done, or I was going to ask for help. So I knew what the answer was because my focus wasn't um or doesn't you know it, there was limited value in me spending all my time in the formalities area to do it myself so um and that's when i can reached out to emmerhub yeah. um you know to you know start to get me through these uh, processes so we arrived actually uh we actually arrived in sanur because at that time we we're not we're not 100 percent sure where we wanted yeah. to stay and and the country was in flux with the pandemic um so is a good place huh? some people say uh, yeah. yeah and uh i you know sanur i mean i can regularly go back to sanur but anyway so we were uh in sanur uh for about a month essentially doing recon about where in bali we wanted to stay and, and then we uh put a put a payment deposit and payment down on our villa for about a year um so, so you, you, went, we you, you did a lease agreement correct yeah, yeah. so we, we had a lease agreement for a year and that was, again, it was, actually, if I look back, it was small steps all the way. It was always small measured steps. Um, and then after the, the year in the villa just allowed us to, again, do more of a, a recall and, um, you know, and find a property that we could um, have for ourselves. Um, so it's a long-term lease, 20 years. Um, and, and, you know, it's periodically, it's been on uh, rental as well as we've yeah. been in and out of the country. But... Um, Largely, it's for ourselves that. Yeah. that How did uh, you did you and with your lease? Did you make the lease under your name? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah linked then also to the to the company as well. To the company yeah. and the so, same time. Yeah, and that's another aspect. Is um, I, I'm a chartered engineer. Um, I'm largely a kind of corporate guy. Yeah. Um, it's I don't kind of see myself. Um, you know. Uh, being a kind of property developer, yeah, that yeah. type of thing. Yeah, it's a specific it's job. Not, right? It's not really yeah. my thing. Yeah? Uh, so everybody my thing, wants to, yeah. to develop properties and uh, yeah. to be an investor or in real estate. It's possible, but it's also a, a work, you know. It's, Every it's day hard work. You have to it's follow hard work. up. Yeah. You have, or you have to delegate to somebody, to a management company that is taking your fees on it. So, yeah. Um, but wait, yeah, when you arrive, I think in Indonesia, first you need to know the country, you know. Mm -hmm. And, then, For sure, and yeah. you have to know where you're good at. Like you say, you're an engineer. I mean, uh, you know, what you're doing, you have to focus on, on first on what, what you, you know. And what, what you know. Where you're good yeah. at, you yeah. know. it's Correct. Uh, yeah. So my business is what I would call a little bit of old group in Europe. So the old group is all the all the engineering, um, energy kind of comp corporation type stuff. And that really has been the kind of foundation. Um uh, that's then allowed us to kind of branch out from that and you know seek other opportunities um particularly in in the more kind of digital kind of space um and let me also explore um with what the you know poor post you know corporate career might be yeah. because it's a, a road that you have to kind of invent for yourself uh create for yourself i think um Envision, envision it, and then can then try and make yeah. some steps towards so, it. So, so just uh, before going to the um, to the next step and the, how Bali is and the opportunity. When 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 you came to Bali, because I I think it's interesting for for people who are uh, listening as well. Is how did you 
or how we went into the process because we also help you mm -hmm. um did you make your your company first did you uh make your uh, lease uh, find your place first H how did you handle into this process because now you're staying um under your your company and uh, also uh, with uh, with all the family so yeah you can work uh, here you can work legally you have your your stay permit so we have a lot of people who are listening they want to come to indonesia and they want this stay permit you know mm -hmm. they want to i want to live here they come to me hey flo how, how do i do with my family can i get a kitas for my family a kitas is a stay permit it's uh mm -hmm. it's something that allow you to stay in indonesia okay. for a certain period of time yeah you can get it with a company or you can get it because you invest in a property i mean for with different things or because you're yep. working you have a working visa etc so how how during this yeah. journey did you find it complicated uh and yeah, yeah. i think uh, it, it is uh, so my previous experience in jakarta was uh you know i was an employee of a company and it was given to me uh and that's quite a um when you're not with that corporation and you go well how am i going to stay in this country um so largely we set down uh, the creation of the company um, round about the same time as we purchased uh, yeah. the property as well. So those things came together, but there was a, a little, a little bit of kind of processing as we arrived from one um, arrangement of the kitas to um, essentially it being an investor kitas. Yeah. So the transition of the visas from one status um one status to another status yeah i mean emerhob actually looked after that totally kind of seamlessly um so really kind of professional uh, but there were times when you know the passports need to go in yeah. and we need to go to the immigration office for yeah. you know getting our your fingerprints, fingerprints, and fingerprints and especially getting... when you change status so when you change status of your visa it's a process sometimes a bit yeah longer yeah. But, so yeah. it uh it can be something that um is intimidating but what i have yeah. to say is um that you know uh, you know emerhub as an as an agent in that um you know explained it very well yeah. handled it very professionally and you know the real re the the amount of you know interruption um you know to to my day and the family's day was kind of like absolutely kind of minimal so okay, cool. um so that aspect <laughs> of kind of the things coming together um you know with the creation of the biz business the company and also um, finding the property; those things kind of came together pretty much straight away, you know, at the same time. Uh, one aspect of being an investor is that you've got a you have a target of your investment that you yeah you need to uh, fulfill, you know, as yeah. Part of yeah, fulfill yeah and comply. Yeah, yeah. there yeah, isn't yeah. really a time in terms yeah. of when you fulfill towards it, but or when that needs to be completed. But um, at least if you are purchasing a property, it's a yeah. significant step. Yeah, it's, an, that, uh, it's a step because it's an investment that is an injection into yes. your company. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if people want to, uh, to create a company or they want to invest here and they want to work also, a company can have a different business activity and um, yep. business license or Correct. business code. Yeah. Yeah. And in this case, um, depending on the activities they want to do, um, the lease, for example, can be an injection. Uh, the value it's an investment into the company that they can use it uh, to fulfill some requirements, obligations. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's not right. explain all of them because it yeah. will be boring for the yeah, for the podcast for them. Yeah, but, but you know the thing is, but that, it's uh, important yeah. to know that for sure when you you create something, you have some obligation, you have some yeah. compliance. Uh, same like if you make a company in France or in uh, in uh, Scotland, yeah, uh, it, I guess it it's comes the same, with yeah. it comes with things yeah. like corporation tax, yeah, exactly, uh, personal sort of tax, yeah. all the kind of the the quarterly kind of tax submissions, all these kind of important. processes yeah. uh, need to be you know need to be complied with because um, Indonesia I feel is uh, it's on top of its stuff largely. Um, it's a very digitally savvy country, so it yeah. knows if a a company is going out of compliance and you get yeah. notified very quickly sure. when you're out of yeah. compliance um and how you need to get back into order so um there is an aspect of um well there's two things that you can't expect you can't um you know get away from is death and taxes right so yeah. um and in indonesia you, is it just another place that you're not going to get away with not paying yeah. your taxes so um so that aspect is again if you're going to operate compliantly um and for the long term, the sustainable aspect of it is that you got to 
you know, unfortunately, um, no one really likes it, but you got to do it. Uh, no, but is... I mean, uh, this is very important what you say because um, sometimes the people want to make a company and they say, Can, what are the implications? You have to declare your tax, okay? And, um, oh, oh, Flo, I, didn't, I don't know uh, if there is tax to pay. For sure there is tax to pay, you know? <laughs> I mean, a country, you... You, you you manage a country or you develop a country because you have income coming, you know, also because there is tax. Yeah. If you want the road to be in a, in a good shape, if people say, hi, uh, um, the road uh, here is not, is not in a good shape or yeah. we need to, uh, they need to improve the infrastructure. Yeah. But after when you ask them, do you pay tax? Oh, I don't want to pay tax. You know, yeah, exactly. it's a balance yeah. to find. It's you a know? balance, and, yeah, yeah. You can't in, have one and not the exactly. other. Exactly. And in Indonesia, there is tax, there is regulation, and there is rules. And it's important to say to people, it's not a jungle. Okay, so you have uh, you have compliance to do. And I think it's uh, Indonesia has, uh, has some rules that are very clear. Sometimes people say, oh, it's the, we don't understand the rules. or No, the rules are here and they are very clear. Very it's clear, just, yeah. It's just sometimes because you try to go around the rule, you know? So if you try to go around the rule, yeah, it becomes complicated, you know? Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it's important to consult for sure some people to expl explain to you the rules because most of the information, unfortunately, is not in English. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, I mean, if you go to Singapore, everything is in English. If you go to Philippines, will be most of the things yeah, will be in English. Exactly. But so Indonesia, it's, in Bahasa, it's Indonesia, the access to yeah. the information that sometimes... Uh, can make things a bit complicated yep. or not complicated but difficult to understand because the information is not accessible sometimes very easily if you don't use somebody yeah, and, else. And, yeah. and there's so much there's so much of it so I think in, in that aspect again you really need someone competent capable to be able to can handle that yeah. arrangement otherwise you're going to be yeah. doing it all all day long and, and and I would sort of say it's a lot simpler to be compliant um, rather than yeah. to be evading these things because you you really won't escape yeah. and you know the other aspect is um indonesia is um it's your international income that you generate that is that is essentially taxed here if you're a resident here so it's also something that you need to be aware to of consider, because, yeah, yeah. you know i am a you know I'm a, I'm a consultant most of my clients are international um and i bring that so what's, what's your company with uh, you're consulting to who? Yeah, maybe yeah, to, so, if somebody listen and it's consultancy, maybe. Yeah. yeah so my company name is it's called Kriya, um, yeah. which you know is is an Indonesian word and it's also a, an a, an Indian word yeah. um, means kind of craft and skill. Um, but essentially, it's providing um, engineering consultancy um, um, to uh, energy operators, energy companies around the world. Most of them are. Um, were existing kind of contacts um, that I had um, or ne through my networks. Um, and again, the income needs to be, you know, declared, you know, here mm. and, the, and the taxes and the taxes paid. One of the, so I've kind of... It, it's I, paid here because you're actually uh, the company exactly. is here. It's normal to, uh, yeah, to pay exactly. tax. Yeah. One step that I, I have, it's taken me a while to take is those my clients were all international, not in Indonesia, um, and the administrative step then to work for big corporations that are based in Indonesia has been a step that's taken a, a little bit longer uh, because of all of those compliance and entry arrangements. Um, but again, but, yeah, I think you know it's again for me it's the aspect of small measured steps. Um, you know, building yeah. the foundation, making sure the foundation is strong. Um, and understanding what the risks are as well with each yeah. of those, with each of those no, steps. It's great what you say. Honesty is very, very important for people who listen because um, we have some clients also. They come to us and they are have consultancy or they want to work from uh, from Bali or from Indonesia, Jakarta, and sometimes they try to arrange or make a company in Europe, asking to work from here. It's just to show that it's possible. If you make your company here, you can be legal here, you can make consultancy from here, you can uh, have your clients oversee and work here. It, it will not scare your clients. Your clients, uh, it's not because you have a company in Indonesia to, that you're going to lose clients. You know, you pay your tax, everything is legal. The transfers, they can transfer in USD, they can pay 
in ideas, they can pay in euro, you have multi currency yeah. accounts. So the taxation is for sure is not a, a fiscal paradise, but the taxation is not as high as it can be in the UK in Europe, yeah. or in France. Yeah. And I think that it's also a contribution to the economy it's here. Con- yeah, so yeah. if you're here, you're at least contributing, yeah. you know, you're contributing to the country. Uh, you can say to your Indonesian friends that you're yeah. you're paying your taxes, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're kind of contributing. So yeah. I think, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, yeah. Um, no, it's good. And, and what is interesting also is that you have also... Uh, a different experience because a lot of people come to Bali uh, in the tourism industry mm-hmm. or we had some podcast about the, the real estate uh, a lot but your activity is also a bit uh, in parallel of uh, of that I mean uh, you are in the oil and gas industry so Indonesia because you work for that at the time Indonesia is a very big country mm-hmm. okay that has a lot of resources and so the opportunity in Indonesia are not only into tourism Oh, for okay. sure, yeah. I mean, this is, um, you know, if you spend any time in Jakarta, you just see how vibrant um, the, you know, the the city is and the potential of the country. You know, it's a massive population. It's a huge country. Um, I mean, Bali is an interesting intersection point, I think, between, you know, um, Indonesians and people from outside, I guess, yeah. you know. Um, so it's kind of, it's a, it's a melting point. Um but the kind of business potential in Indonesia is absolutely huge. Um, and I also, also think there's a really rich culture in the, in the yeah. rest of the country as well. And there's so much to kind of learn and, and experience in the country. Yeah. Not I just mean, in, if you go from Bali. Sumatra to Papua, you've been yeah. in Papua as well. Yeah, many times to Papua <laughs> had... Uh, so Papua, you know, it's... Um, For you know, people, what, uh, just to explain, Papua... Is, it's a province in Indonesia called West Papua. It is different from Papua New Guinea. Correct, yeah. So yeah, yeah. just to explain, uh, just yeah. So the island of Papua and Papua New Guinea is massive island, and kind of straight, you know, divided straight down the middle. Um, one side is um, Papua Indonesia, and the other side is Papua New Guinea, uh, an independent independent country. But just the kind of whole span of Indonesia from Aceh to yeah. Papua, it's um, it's incredible the kind of size of it. Yeah. But you know. I think, you know, going back to the company, I mean, my company has kind of developed in way, ways that I didn't necessarily expect. Um, but, you know, now I'm able to employ really, uh, what would I call them? I would call them high quality um, jobs for Indonesian, well-paid jobs yeah. uh, for in- Indonesians, professional jobs for Indonesians. Um, and that's really rewarding for me um, because it's international investment coming into the country that's giving you know um those good jobs to yeah. to indonesia yeah, 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 so, exactly yeah it uh, and it's access through it's access access through my company and you know it provides something sustainable um I, it, it obviously improves the kind of lives of um you know indonesians and the technology that's coming in is improving the country as well so I think it's a really exciting point for me. Um, it has been when you know the the day that we're able to employ the you know our first Indonesian yeah. with um, you know really kind of high quality jobs. Yeah, um, yeah it's very, you have resources here of uh, human resources uh, and talent in Indonesia that uh, are just also uh, asked to be hired. You know, it's not only uh, some uh, local. I mean. It's difficult. To, there is no low quality job, but unqualified jobs, I would mm-hmm. say. Um, and and Indonesia is full of resources uh, for that. Also, of people you were talking about Jakarta. I mean, you have some people. Uh, I went went to the best university, or yeah. or went to uh, yeah. US, Interna- Europe. international universities. Yeah. Um, and, and even in in, in Jakarta, there is good, very good university in uh, in Indonesia. So people who wants to hire people. Um, they can, they can they develop can, yeah. their business, they can hire people here, like you said, and and when you make your company, when like you said, when you hire somebody, suddenly yeah, you're you're part also of the yeah of the community. And there's yeah. another, there, yeah, you're part of the community, but there's another weight of responsibility, and there's another aspect of risk as well because you become an employer, which means that you have to provide an employment contract, um, and the primary language is Bahasa Indonesia. Yeah. Um, for that contract, so even though I might have spent hundreds of hours doing my Bahasa Indonesia lessons, yeah. be relatively 
okay at ordering a cup of coffee yeah. uh, it's a different um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a different um, story when it comes yeah. to uh, well, that's why we help you on that because it's exactly a, it's another yeah, yeah. area where I reached out to yeah. um, Emerhub for you know I need help with because I don't want to kind of spend my time on you know employment contracts and then it's the whole payroll yeah. you know um, the employees need to get paid all those need to be done in a sort of compliant manner that the Indonesian in, Indonesians come to expect they come to expect that you know there's health insurance, the the period, you know the, the salaries coming in, the taxes are paid, all that kind of stuff yeah. needs to be done compliantly. So it's another, it's another step. Um, it's a, it's, a, step it's again a very very important point for people who are listening. If you relocate to uh, to Indonesia, if you come to Bali, everything has to be in Indonesian, in Bahasa Indonesia. Mm-hmm. Because if you have a contract, uh, or le- even let's talk about the lease, the lease agreement, the employment contract, okay, this has to be in Bahasa, Indonesia, in the language. Because even if you have in English the contract, and uh, you have another version in Indonesian, if both versions are not in the same line, the Indonesian version will be uh, the primary one. The primary the one. one yeah. And so I've been in a situation um not with them hub but uh by the past where a version in Bahasa and a version in english were different and the guy the notary at the time said it's okay it's in indonesian is the one that is is working so it's very important for people to make sure that when they hire somebody when they make a, a, a an agreement lease for a villa or to buy a property anything making a company whatever to make sure that what they have the version to use a professional that yep. can um, detect if there is something that is not correct. Because even if they t- give to you and they say, this is the English version, this is the translation, the translation will have no uh, power. It has, it has, it has yeah. no power, yeah. yeah. So I've used the, the Emerhub lawyers a few times. Yeah. Um, so on the property, normally folks will just go to a notary yeah. and um, they'll kind of put their papers forward um, but I kind of felt there was a bit, there was a bit too much risk in just doing that. Um, um, so what I requested was was a, a due diligence yeah. um, done on the property that I was going to buy, so that I could have a bit of an independent view um, uh, and everything kind of checked out before. Um, there was a bit of overlap between what the notary did and what um, the Emerhub yeah. lawyers did, but yeah. there wasn't a full overlap. So. I did get good confidence and, yeah. you know, a kind of fairly significant investment step that I was going to make. Um, yeah, it's so an insurance th- also, you know, because you, uh, the result probably the same at the end sometimes or there is more information, but, you know, the, the, the notary job is to sign. And how the, the notary is making money at the end is because the contract is done. So it's, it's advantage is to make people... Signing, you mm-hmm. know, so yeah, yeah, that that's so, um, so this is job. That's his, yeah. There's a kind of different, yes, yeah, so that's why it, it's different things. One is is making money because the signature is done, and the, other, and the other one is making money because it's easier to make sure that you are it's in your interest to do it. That normally the notary has to make it's in the interest of both parties. I'm exaggerating a bit, but at the end, is making money because yeah. he has. A, all the interest that everything ha- the the deal happened, you know. Yeah. So that's why it's important. Also, sometimes when I say, yeah, but the notary, for example, um, it's cheaper, you know. For example, they would say, yeah, because he's taking already the percentage cheaper, yeah, in, the tran- in the in the transaction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because you know the price is in if it's one percent, for example, but what you're paying is already in the one yeah. percent. But you can always bargain. 0.75 something so suddenly it's not the same price you know but you think it's cheaper because it's already taking money somewhere else so this is always something to consider when uh, when yeah. you make things but same for the contract i go back to your employment contract because um the regulation in indonesia for uh, employment is is a bit complex sometimes it's not like in the US, you know, in the US you can hire somebody and uh, the day after mm-hmm. you say bye-bye, you know, yeah. and say it's finished. I start my career in finance, I will always remember there was Lehm- Lehman Brothers, you know, in 2008, you know, that collapse. Yeah. And from the day to day, I was calling Lehman Brothers and nobody was replying at the phone because everybody was taking the carton and was leaving, leaving the building. Leaving yeah. the building. In Indonesia, it's a bit different. You, you cannot do that like that. You have some 
severance pay, you have some so warning severance letter. Terms are, yeah, yeah, the severance terms so are, are you know, um, so it's a country where, you know, the, the regulations protect the employee and they're clear what the, very clear about what the conditions are for, you know, the termination of the employment. So again, it's a, another, for me, it's another aspect of, yes, I want to do it, but it comes with some risk. So having something that's kind of um, compliant that is, you know, balanced in, in, in that way, um, because I have experienced certainly when I was working for the corporation um, in Jakarta that, you know, these things really get tangled up and can also, you know, go, go to court, you know, in terms of someone is proposed to be let go, but they are, you know, saying, well, this is unjustified. Um, so, I, so, I mean, it is what it is. Um, you know, that's the, that's the nature of the country. That's yeah. the culture of the country. Um, and, you know, an aspect is if you want to be here for the longer term is that you've, you just got to appreciate that and, you know, um, yeah, just, the, just be aware of it. Eyes, yeah. eyes wide open. I mean, uh, I, in Indonesia is considered a high, high risk place to go for corporations to go and invest in. Um, so it has, in terms of traffic light, it's a bright red for, you know, aspects of corruption. Um, the, it's changing since uh, since Jokowi. Uh, there, there was it, a, it, it, it is um, there, it, there was a it, lot it of is, anti corruption. It's changing. Uh, yeah. It's changing fast. Um, I, a recent activity that I had done uh, in in my company was an international company wanted to kind of work uh, with me here, but in order for them to do that, they wanted to perform a due diligence yeah. of my company. Yeah. So all of the the documents that Emmer had Emmer Hub had prepared for me and all the certificates that had that effectively Emerald had sourced um, and put in place for the company. Yeah. Uh, it was easy for me just to send all yeah. that. Um, and yeah. really pleased that the due diligence, you know, came out without, uh, uh, without any issues. Yeah. And, and then there's a lot of international investment now coming in through, through the company. Yeah. To, we, uh, we had some uh, even external clients. Uh, sometimes they come to us and, as for company profile to make sure that uh, the company yeah, is a is a public company or private company here that is legit and mm -hmm. uh, and um, there is no issues with the directors or, or the shareholders yeah so um, yeah it it's interesting because indeed you have some uh, an ID sometimes with a corporation outside that say Indonesia like you say it can be flag as yes yeah, some difficulty sometimes. I think it's also before, like 10, 15 years ago, there is still this image. But like we said at the beginning, I think that when you follow the, the follow rules, rules yeah, and um, when you go, when you do your stuff uh, properly, there is no issue, you know. It's like, I take this example, and maybe I, I took this example in, a, uh, in other podcasts as well, but I think it, it's very interesting to say that again. Some people say, hey, Flo, um, the country is corrupt or, or whatever. They stop me in, on the streets and they ask me uh, something. I said, why? And it never happened to me. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have your helmet, if you have uh, your driving license, nobody's going to stop yeah. you and ask you anything. Yeah, you don't things, have, you things don't happen, have any, yeah. yeah. Things happen when you don't drive properly, when you don't... Uh, have your insurance when you don't have your driving your license, visa, yeah. you don't have your driving license. This is what makes the things also sometimes complicated is because, be, like we said at the beginning, if you pay your tax, people say, yeah, it's so complicated. No, it's complicated when you try to go around the tax. It's complicated when you don't have your driving license and you don't wear your helmet because suddenly you have to yeah. deal with things. But if you go to France... Yeah, and you don't drive with your helmet yeah. or even or with gloves now. Seat, seat belts yeah. and, yeah. you know. Oh. Even now, if you don't have the shoes and the gloves, they can stop you, you know. So, and nobody is saying, yeah, it's so complicated to make things and people, people just are know, asking. People just know. Yeah. So, I think the, the key message is, yeah. you know, take time to learn and yeah. learn the rules um, yeah. and quickly put things in place. You know, when, when I arrived here... Um, you know, the first thing I did was I'd never actually ridden a scooter in my life, yeah. you know, um, and I was going up and down the main street in Sanur, yeah. just sort of like, 
um, you know, getting used to the thing. Yeah. Uh, but you know, one of the first things I did was just get the driving license. Exactly. Just yeah. get get the driving license done, yeah. so I'm not kind of worried worried about that. Um, and I think you have to kind of put a little bit of a plan in place for yourself about yeah. these are all the things that it's going to take. You know, on week one, week two, week three, when you arrive, these are all the things that you. Um, and you know, one one thing that I did do was, I mean, I did have some friends in in Bali, um, or I had friends in Jakarta that knew of people in Bali, uh, but getting someone that can help you with these small things, um, again, it's a, you know, it's more like a you know, it's a job that you can give to someone, but having someone that, you know, can, again, can take some of these, sm I would call them smaller administrative yeah. matters. Yeah. Um, because when you initially arrive here, your Bahasa Indonesia is not going to be very good. <laughs> your knowledge of the rules isn't yeah. going to be very but good, e even though you might kind of study it. Even if outside. you understand people in the street speaking to you, yeah, we had this discussion. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you understand also the proper uh, language uh, of the official yeah. Uh, documents yeah. or whatever you know yeah. This is, yeah and i've got a great story on yeah. that yet yeah, uh last no a week before last i was in jokja or jokjakarta which is you know the cultural center of um you know java and you can sort of say the country but um so i was at this conference and i'm talking to officials in in my version of my bahasa indonesia and having that conversation with or have you know, me opening up and i think i'm kind of doing really well until they start talking and then I'm kind of looking at them and my brain is kind of processing what they've just said. And it's just taken me a little bit longer. And this is an IT <laughs> conference, so we had laughed that I've got a slow processor. You know. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I mean, I think definitely taking time to get, you know, to get familiar with the language. Because even if you've got someone that's helping you um, on the smaller ass, smaller items, their English may not be also that that yeah. great. And But I think it's um, definitely something I appreciate appreciating the culture because there's some courses that you can also do yeah. on the culture and um getting those um language classes and is a good and idea so now you've been for a few years uh do you see yourself continuing business uh here and ever how do you see uh, indonesia now continuing to grow because you have been for a few years do you see um in bali the the changes we are saying there is more regulation or at least it's more reinforced mm -hmm. so there is more compliance do you see the business uh, in bali uh, opportunity here uh developing or do you see yourself still staying here uh, you are saying that you are going to france so you i'm happy yeah, because you're going to yeah. france also <laughs> for for holidays but at the end a lot of people are coming here now i think it's a it's a place where in terms of even consultancy you say you're saying you have people so from so many countries in the same times coming here and give um, like a big brainstorming with everybody talking from different industry, from mm -hmm. different countries, from different uh, um, job or experience. Uh, so I'll... yeah, I mean, I see. I mean, I see Indonesia as an emerging, an emerging economy, an emerging you know country and and there's great power and potential in in the country so you know you know close to home in bali I, you just have to you know go around the um the area um and you know the investment that's the investment that's coming in is phenomenal the amount of investment yeah. that's coming in to really kind of build out um the island i mean that puts many pressures on on things where i can feel I would like, as an engineer, I would kind of like to make a difference, but yeah. you can only kind of spread yourself so thin when it sort of comes to these things. But, uh, you know, there's terrific investment coming into Bali. And as you yeah. then go out... They're going to make an RRT now, huh? Eh? So, uh, I mm -hmm. see that the uh, UK is going to... Uh to help and finance the LRT, like the... Yeah, the, the, the tra yeah. 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 So, um, and then as you would go to, um, you know, Jakarta, you would be, you know, I mean, initially massively so, so surprised about how well developed that uh, city uh, is. Jakarta, is, I mean, is, is, it's so, some people, uh, I think, underestimated, especially people living in Bali, they underestimate the potential of Jakarta. If you go south of Jakarta, it's as developed at Singapore or yeah, correct, as yeah. uh, La Défense in France or the city in 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 London, you know. So it 
well, good infrastructure. The, the, Great infrastructure. And, and, and I find sometimes, I find sometimes the street in Siljakarta much cleaner than in, than in Bali. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah ab- absolutely. It's, um, yeah. So I think, um, you know, as a country, You know, it's a great place to live. Um, it's it's you know a great place. I think to you know to to develop a different kind of life. Um, from you know, I'm born in Scotland. Obviously, Indian background. Um, so you know, this is this is a a really enjoyable kind of journey for for me. Um, yeah. Um, so I don't see any kind of issues and aspects around that. There'll always be, you know, political turmoil in one place to another place, you know, around the world, you know, these things, these yeah. things are there. I mean, having a, a plan B for yourself is always, I think, a good yeah. idea. Um, um, whether, you know, listen to the opportunities all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think about yeah. it. Yeah. And I, I, think just be- I like to, to go to my plan A because if I think sometimes to the plan B, I don't go 100%, but I always listen to opportunities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so. Um, but then, you know, as I said, you know, the measure steps, understanding the opportunity, understanding yeah. the risk. Yeah. And then for me, it's always been working within, you know, my means and taking those kind of slow and measure steps. But, you know, that's not for everyone. You know, yeah. you know, there are those yeah. that obviously take much bolder decisions. Um, it's not but, easy you know, yeah, to relocate, to create things, but uh, yeah, at the end it's possible. Family it's and, what and you stuff show, as yeah. well. Yeah. So, yeah, th- thank you so much uh, for for this uh, podcast and explaining uh, all your journey uh, in Indonesia. So if your people want to have a consultancy, uh, oil and gas, uh, so they can uh, reach to you. Absolutely. And yeah. so we will just summarize a bit. Uh, if you want to come here, um, it's and create your company, it's totally possible. It's easy, but takes time for mm-hmm. sure and takes to assistance sometimes of a uh, professional. But it's a country with a lot of opportunity. Uh, think about when you go to relocate, you know, which visa you need, uh, company that you have to structure if you want to make business. You, the opportunity are not only in tourism or mm-hmm. in, uh, in hotel. Indonesia is, is huge. There is a lot of potential. Uh, think about the school. Think about the the and pay your tax. Okay, it's not so huge, but do it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, after everything will be well, and it will be a very successful. Thanks, for, Will. For joining. It's been a Thank pleasure, you guys. Yep. Um, so uh, please like or share if you have uh, or in comment put some question, and we'll be happy to uh, to reply and to help. And see you for the next uh, podcast. Thank you. <laughs>